Hey guys, thanks for joining us for another Maker interview. For this installment, we're happy to share with you a conversation we had with Lou from the YouTube channel Live Free and DIY. Lou's a great guy and a budding maker and YouTuber, and we're sure you'll love getting to know him a little bit better. As always, guys, you can watch every episode of The Maker's View on our Waylight Creations YouTube channel, or you can listen to it on iTunes, Stitcher, or stream it directly from our website. Links to all of these are located in the video description and the podcast show notes. Now, without further ado, let's get to know a little bit more about Lou from Live Free and DIY. Hey, Lou, how you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Uh, as you know, as we start out every interview, I want to get a little bit of an introduction from you. So what would you like to tell everybody watching or listening? My name is Lou, and my YouTube channel is Live Free and DIY. I basically like to make things, and I just tinker around and make whatever I feel like making or need to make or whatever my wife tells me to make. <laughs> All right. You're more of a general DIYer or maker. You kind of, you don't stick to one kind of medium. So when did you get into making? I guess I've been making since I was a kid. I mean, starting with Play-Doh and Legos. I used to take things apart a lot and try to put them back together. That eventually led into a career in technology where I built servers and websites. And that's what I do full time now is work on web stuff. I don't really build websites, but I work on the software that's used for websites. So I've always made stuff somehow. <laughs> whether it's scripting on the computer or if we need a shelf. Oh, cool. So it's just kind of in your blood, huh? Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'm, I'm curious. I don't know if anybody else is, but what is the reason for your channel name? The channel name is, like, one of the hardest things to come up with. I had, like, four completed videos before I had a channel name. And my wife actually helped me a lot picking this one, but basically I am a pretty big libertarian, and I come from Maine, which is right next to New Hampshire, whose state logo is Live Free or Die. And we came up with the idea of doing Live Free and DIY. Because doing it yourself is a form of freedom. If you can make something that is custom to what you want and how you want it, then you don't have to rely on someone else telling you how it should be. So that's really what the point of the name is. That's cool. I like the I like the idea behind it. Um, vlogging. You do a lot of vlogging in between your projects. So why did you decide to go that route? Well, I really wanted to keep the projects separate from the talking to kind of help the project videos be fairly short. I like to try to keep them around five to ten minutes. But I also want an opportunity to one, mm -hmm. explain a little bit about why I did something or what went wrong or what I learned. And I do that in my vlogs. So if something screwed up but it wasn't a big enough script to show on the project video, then I'll talk about it in my vlog. I also like to use the vlog as a way to connect with the listener, talk a little bit about myself, what I like, what I like to do, what's happening in my life. So it's kind of like a combo talk about what happened in my last project and talk a little bit more about who I am and what I'm right. doing and what's going on in my life. All right, it's a nice little addition to a channel when people do vlogs it kind of lets you get to know them a little bit better and I like it. Yeah, I really like it and a lot of people separate their vlogs from their channel and supposedly yeah. there's good reason to do that but I kind of like want it all to be in one channel. I want the, my subscribers to want to see both of that content. I don't really want to separate it. Right. Maybe I'll be penalized by YouTube. I don't know. Nah, it's your channel. You do what you want, yeah. right? Yeah, the free and DIY. All right. All right. Uh, you, are you going to keep doing the blogs? Can we expect to see that in the future as we go, f you know, go forward? Yeah, I plan on I plan on doing at least one vlog per project. I think I actually have more vlogs out there than I do project videos right now just because sometimes it's too hard to get out there and make something. Right. But yes. but I do have 10 or 20 minutes to talk about my week, so right. so I do plan on it. That's one thing that's attracted me 
about YouTube is to be able to have that voice for just a vlog if you want one, or just a project video if you want one. Right. So you, that's a kind of a good segue into the next question. What made you want to get into doing the YouTube videos? Uh, that's a interesting question. Um, I've always been someone who liked to share information. Um, probably the most notable example I can give is I used to be big into playing EverQuest and there was a certain quest you could do to get some pair of boots or something and it was really hard to do this quest because this one particular monster or whatever was hard to find and there was a lot of tutorials online but nothing really specific so I actually took a lot of time to write down step by step of what you needed to do, how you needed to do it, where you needed to go, especially to find these creatures. And I posted that online. Uh, and now I have a regular blog that I used to post regularly, regularly, but I don't really post to it anymore. But if I want to share an idea or something new I discovered, it used to be more religion based, but lately it's more things unique and new that I've done with computer programming. I've just always liked to share my ideas in a way that would hopefully help somebody who either wants to be able to do that or is having trouble do it to just get some new perspective. And so that I think that kind of fit in with YouTube. But also, I don't really like doing things that I can't monetize. So most of my hobbies are things that I really enjoy doing but I want to make money doing them. And so part of that is I know that if I make something I can put a video on YouTube and monetize it even if it's only going to make me a dollar or ten dollars right. or whatever knowing that my time is being used on something that I both enjoy and am earning some potential income from. So it's kind of selfish and kind of just my joy of sharing information yeah hey at least you're honest about your intentions with it right <laughs> yeah yeah um let's see what's going here um oh your youtube experience so far what's that been like for you it's been really good um i started my channel at the beginning of this year i think the second or third week in january and i am at i think 550 subscribers now Good. I've been pretty happy with that. I think my goal is going to be hopefully a thousand subscribers on my year anniversary. Um, that would be kind of cool. Yeah. One thing I really find interesting about YouTube is going through the analytic data and just trying to figure out what the heck is happening with your channel. <laughs> so I have a video that was kind of in response to Southern Ginger Workshop's channel, Zach. Um, he made a carpenter bee trap and he lives in Atlanta. I live in South Georgia and at the same time we were having a bad carpenter bee situation. I don't know if you have carpenter bees where you are. So I had an idea of taking an old 4x4 and making like a really simple and easiest version of a carpenter bee trap that I could <laughs> think of. And I made one, I put a video up. I gave out a shout out to Zach and a month okay. later I looked and my revenue was at like $10 for the month and it had been at like 50 cents and I was like what the heck is going on so I looked and that video just got really popular and it has almost like 40,000 views now I have no idea why that happened or what made it happen his hadn't made his hadn't become that popular compared to mine so just trying to figure out why things are happening or what what's causing them to happen like I have a video that I made in April where just two weeks ago it just started getting popular and I have no idea why so I like spending some time in the analytic data and just trying to yeah. figure out what's happening yeah. with my videos I enjoy the educational process and oh, yeah. just trying to learn what's going on there yeah all right what kinds of things inspire your projects uh, lots of things um, 
most of the things that inspire me are watching other stuff on YouTube and um, the need for something or the want for something. Um, oh, well, okay, like my squatty potty video. I wanted a squatty potty, but I wasn't going to go to Target and spend 30 or 40 or 50 dollars for a squatty potty. I actually went to the patent office website, looked up the squatty potty patent to get the dimensions of the squatty potty, and went into my shop and built my own. Um, now, Izzy Swan made a video, a squatty potty video, a few months back, but I totally swear it was on my list of to do's before his video. Um, so basically, like, if I want something and I can make it, that's where I get most of my inspiration from. Um, what do you see for the future of your channel and your content? I don't know. I'm going to continue making content. I try to do a video and a vlog once a week. This summer that kind of stopped because it was so hot down in South Georgia. It's just too hard to get out there. Yeah. And there's a lot of stuff I want to start doing with Arduinos and Raspberry Pis. I haven't touched on any of that stuff in my videos yet. Cool. But I have a lot of projects I'm planning on doing with those. So I'd like to take it in that direction, but also still do some woodworking. One of the tools I'd like to get is a lathe. I'd like to start doing some vases and bowls. All right. So, really, I'm just going to make and continue to make things that I want to make. The maker community. What are your thoughts on the maker community as a whole? I love the maker community. I subscribe to a lot of makers on YouTube. I try to get them as much support as I can. Usually... If I'm subscribed to your channel for a long enough time and I like your content long enough, I will go to your Patreon and throw you a dollar or two dollars a month. Um, I really think it is important to support makers, especially for getting this content for basically free. I just love the maker community. <laughs> I love going to the maker fairs. I've met a bunch of YouTubers this year. I've become pretty close with Zach, again, from Southern Ginger Workshop. Yeah, we chat occasionally, like once a week. Usually about YouTube stuff. <laughs> I've never had the opportunity to go to a Maker Fair. Sounds like a really good time from what I've heard. Yeah, there's one in Atlanta. Um, I went last year. I'm planning on going again this year. Me, my wife, and my cool. three kids. It's good to get the kids out there to see what other people oh, yeah. are making. And hopefully to spur them on to making stuff. Yeah. Gotta pass it down. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is always a fun one for everybody to answer. Of all your videos, what's the favorite one you've made? Uh, yeah, I don't really know if I have a favorite video that I've made. Um, I love all my videos. <laughs> uh, I think probably the thing I'm... I have on my most favorite list right now is my latest video where I made a concrete birdhouse. I do that as part of the Quick Crete One Bag Challenge, I think it's called. Um, and it just came to me. I was thinking, what can I do with a bag of concrete? And I was like, how about a birdhouse? I don't think I've ever seen anybody make a birdhouse out of concrete before. Let's see if I can make it work. And I made it work. That's the first time that I've used concrete. And uh, we have a light pole on our driveway, and I have it hanging on that light pole. So every time we drive by, I see this like 30 pound birdhouse there and it just makes me happy to see it every time I'm driving by it so I probably get the most joy out of that one because I see that most although I do get a lot of joy out of the squatty potty <laughs> yeah completely different kind of enjoyment <laughs> alright um, usually at the end of every interview we give everybody a chance to shout out some other makers or who would you like to shout out or who would you like to let other people know about? Uh, can I say everybody? <laughs> nope. Can't take the easy way out. <laughs> I think when I first started out on YouTube, I was most inspired by Steve Ramsey and Bob Claggett. Uh, so I just want to give them a shout out for just inspiring me to start making stuff for YouTube. But for this past week, I was really inspired by Ben Brandt. I'm not really sure how to pronounce his last name, but he made a box cutting jig 
and he powered it with a Raspberry Pi. Yeah, it was really awesome. Uh, and seeing that stuff on YouTube, seeing that innovative, those innovative ideas, it just it inspires me, you know. And like with his, it just reminds you of Matthias, who has the manual box cutting jigs, which are awesome. But then to see that taken one step further, um, so I think for now those would be the three shout outs I would give. But seriously, I love all the people I follow on YouTube. They're all inspiring in some way. I couldn't agree more. All right, last one. Where can people find you online, Lou? Well, obviously YouTube, Live Free and DIY. Uh, I usually post on Instagram, which gets sent to my Facebook and Twitter. Those are all Live Free and DIY. And I have a website, livefreeanddiy.tv, where I post all my videos. And there's a contact form if anybody has any questions for me. Cool. All right, man. That was a really good interview. Sweet, short, short sweet, Thanks. and to the point. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, man. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for watching and listening to this episode of The Maker's View. Make sure you check out Lou and his channel, as well as all the other places you can find him online. Links to those, as well as anything else mentioned in this episode, can be found in the video description or the podcast show notes. I want to say thank you to those of you who join us for each one of these interviews and for those who subscribe to our channel. If this is your first time here, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with all future interviews and our latest projects. Thanks again for the support, the love, and everything else. Until next time, guys, take care.